Hello, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Quest for All Probe Science. So in the last episode, we had a couple of good suborbital trajectories and we got to collect a lot of science. Uh, in this episode, I'm actually hoping to get to orbit and collect some more science, uh, maybe even get to high orbit. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get to the moon in this episode uh, because there is still a lot of science that I need to collect, but uh, of course, getting to the moon, there is still a lot of science that can be done. So it looks like I've actually managed to unlock uh, some more science features and it looks like uh, just because of the science junior I will be getting rid of this craft and I will be making uh, the beta series of my for this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with a new rocket. Uh, I think for this one I'm just going to be using I'm gonna go with the uh, Stay Putnik probe because I think this will be just fine. I'm going to put uh, two parachutes up here and make sure that they're in uh, some, some somewhat decent symmetry. Uh, and then I can go ahead and I can put a couple of the Science Juniors. So this is going to require quite a lot of finagling just because whenever this rocket comes down it requires uh, quite uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go through a lot of heat and so I'm going to have to control this so I'm just going to go ahead and load up I'm going to try for four I'm if I can I'd, if I can do more that'd be great but just because I don't have the uh, the bigger heat shields the uh, I've had some issues with the procedural heat shield because even though I can make a bigger one although not right now but uh, for maybe later episodes I'll be able to go through and collect more science. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put, I actually need to put these down here so that way they don't blow up whenever we are re-entering. So let's go ahead, whoop, wrong button, let's rotate that down and let's go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, too hot thermometer down here as well and of course the press mat barometer and uh, just because they require a lot, I'll be putting quite a few of these Geiger counters on. So I think, there you go, eight will be just fine. And just because that's a little bothersome, spread these out. And I think that'll be good. Uh, so hopefully this is my craft. Uh, I'm not sure if I have any control. Yeah, and it looks like now other than this uh, inline RCS, but I'm gonna stay away from those uh, so hopefully this will be able to come back down with no issues. If I look at the center of mass, um, it's down there, but not quite far enough. Uh, what I could do is I will put a procedural tank and I will make this tank uh, very, very skinny. Um, I'll increase the size there, but I'll make the length down to... Uh, yeah, I think that'll be enough. Might have to increase it just a bit. But what I want to have is a lead ballast. So then if I just increase this just a tiny bit, we can see that the um, center of mass lowers quite a bit. I think that for this craft. Whoops, got a little glitch there. There we go. Um, so this is the science probe. Now all I want to do is just customize these parachutes so I don't have to keep clicking back and forth. I'll change this for altitude. I think um, I'll go with uh, 1400 meters and keep the deployment altitude at 700. Succeeded. All right, there we go. Should be done. So whenever I hit the one key, that'll be nine. I'll be armed. Oh, actually, I never did set it to be armed. So there we go. So arm the chute. There we go. Now it's done. So let's call, go ahead and call this beta one. Go. Now, uh, I think I am actually just going to, I might just make this a procedural, uh, or I just might make this a, um, I'm not going to do anything fancy with this. I think I'll just make this a suborbital launch first, just because I'm a little wary. Oh, you know what? Did I unlock? I did not unlock any good payload fairings. So, with that, let me just go ahead and uh, increase that to two. So I don't know if I'm going to make this just a one stage or a two stage. Um, I think what I'll do is, I'm a big fan of these Merlin series, I will actually make this a vacuum 
and let's see if I put the fuel in there and if I let's see okay good it's very stable let me just go ahead and increase the length uh, there you go five more than enough with just a minute 46 burn time and so now all I'm going to do is just copy from there down and instead of this being a vacuum engine I will just switch it back to the Merlin 1A and let's go ahead there's the fuel and I actually do want this to be quite a bit bigger oh, that's weird there we go let's grab hold this engine and actually yeah, I would like two of them there we go I think this will be good for a good uh, first launch and actually I might move this up to four just depending yeah it's not quite enough to get to uh, orbit but what I can do is I will actually increase the diameter just a little bit 2.5 and oh, on like a times four symmetry there you go nothing seems to be clipping there and oh yeah look lot plenty of delta V so there you go so the hopes for this is I will be able to get um, quite high into the upper atmosphere, or not the upper atmosphere, into, uh, should be able to circumnavigate most of the globe so I can get a lot of science. Um, although that's like a six day build time, which isn't too bad. And I still have these launch clamps. I really want to get the next step in launch clamps just because it'll make life a whole lot easier because I'm not a big fan of these ones here. Yeah, the Redstone and Juno launch clamp. Not a fan, but they work. I'm just going to have to live with it. Not a very uh, realistic rocket, but I think for this, it'll be just fine. Um, I don't know if I will need these antennas, but just for the heck of it, I will put these on there. There you go. So now I've got something to go against just in case. So there we go. Save that as the beta one. Uh, let me fix these uh, stagings. Let's see, those four are going to ignite, launch clamps, then eventually it's going to run out of fuel, and that's going to separate that engine, and that's going to separate. And let me just move the uh, thermal decoupler down before the parachutes, just in case I misclick. So there we go, I think we're ready for launch. So I'll save that. I'm going to go ahead and make two of these, just in case one fails. I'm going to try not to revert too many flights in this, but if there's any weird glitches like my RCS thrusters don't work after I've clearly made sure that they do work, then I will definitely revert the flight. Because that happens for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know much about programming or modding or doing whatever needs to get done. And uh, all right, looks like we're going for a nighttime flight, but uh, I think I'll go ahead and warp to next morning anyway after I get this rolled out onto the launch pad go delete that warp to next morning for sure and oh there we go all right next morning and let's go ahead and launch so it looks like we're going to have one launch per day because i like to launch it somewhat in the uh, daytime if i can help it because um it's just gonna be a little tricky when i'm going for the uh lunar missions there we go 19 so 9,205 Delta V. I don't think that's going to be um, much help as far as getting to orbit, but I should get a lot of the way, so I'll keep my, keep everything low. And oh, it looks like I just got a clip. Oh, <laughs> that should not have happened. It looks like it accelerated. I got a little boost from the launch cramp, clamp, so I guess they're spring-loaded. All right, so let me just go ahead and open up the uh, science. Uh, X science here and let's start collecting some information. So I'll start getting the Geiger counter, and the mystery goo, and the material study. Let's see what we got here. Alright, there's those, and I'm just gonna keep filling this up until I have all my science. It's gonna load. There we go. Looks like I need some more. There's a lot of Geiger science. I'm definitely going to be uh, needing a lot of those guys just to get the science that I need. There we go. I'll start 
turning this stage over a bit more. Um, check the far. See if we're There we go. All right. So it looks like we're still a nominal. Just to sort of prepare, it can allow me to do some science. Go ahead and collect some more. Looks like uh, I might be running out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to run out of the material study. Not load. There we go. So, wait, so if I reset that. Oh, okay. Ooh, glad I reset it. And I think. Oh, no. Still need one more. Right, there we go. Alright, so I think that's it. So now, just to test out the rest of the craft, just to see what the capabilities are. Um, because also, if I can uh, get some science, I uh, definitely want to get some from the water uh, as far as the surface goes. But for right now, I'm not too worried about the surface. Uh, I'm going to do some of that off camera because it gets a little repetitive uh, as far as collecting the science goes. But um, I guess this is a, a new breakthrough as far as uh, these uh, building and designing these rockets. There we go. Turning over quite aggressively here. A little bit of lag. I think I'm done with Ferrum Aerospace. Turn off the alarm clock. Oh, one. There we go. Keep X Science up in the corner. Just go ahead and watch this launch. Actually, where's my orbit? There we go. Since I'm here, I'm just going to select Prograde and see where this takes me. Oh, there we go, more science. Collect that. And collect this. Oh, there we go. Let's see, I think I'm definitely going to run out of science uh, before, before too long. I'm collecting everything I can in sight. I'm a big fan of the new plume. Whenever it came out in the new update, it's just gorgeous. Looks a bit more realistic too, or at least looking at the uh, actual rockets. Oh boy, that's quite a that's quite a spin there. Jeez. All right. Well. All right. So it looks like I'm gonna go back and revert to surface. There we go. So I can get as far along horizontally as I can because my time to apoapsis is two minutes, two and a half, and I've got a minute and a half left. So yeah, more than enough time to finish this burn and get me along really far. Before this messes up, I'm going to go ahead and arm parachutes. Now, one thing I'm worried about is the re-entry because I need to get this most of the way around the globe so that way the rocket is orientated in the right way because if it's not, everything is just going to burn up. Um, if I had some RCS, I'd just use a couple of thrusters just to you know, push this thing in roughly the right direction. Oh, there we go. Lots more science in space. Let's keep that. This is uh, turning out to be quite a fruitful mission. Go some more Geiger counter. quite light nicely Let's see how far we're going all right we're going nowhere near enough I really want to get the rocket at least somewhere around here I guess near um, Madagascar that'd be fantastic but I don't think I'm gonna quite make it that so what I'm gonna do is right towards the end of the flight I'm gonna put this thing into a very very small spin I'm just gonna give it you know like a little little kick like that and maybe it'll be just slow enough or fast enough to uh, orientate this uh, science probe in the right direction but I think this might I don't think this is gonna work to be honest and kick there we go that uh, kinda worked so there we go nice and slow just keep going If I did not have persistent rotation, this used to be very, very easy without persistent rotation. Because then that way I'm not relying uh, on physics to get me in the right direction. And it looks like I've used up all the uh, science modules, so all there was left to do is just land. So look, all right, now it's 
orientating in the wrong direction. So either way, that's a failure. I'm actually going quite fast too, so relatively speaking, it's uh, actually I made it as far as I wanted to. Wow. Um, I think if uh, this one fails, I'm just going to launch this in the exact same direction, but without putting a spin on it. So go ahead and time warp. Parachutes are armed. I think we're good. And, oh, there we go. See the aerodynamic forces taking effect. Is this thing going to... Uh, yep, here we go. Hmm. What did I lose? Everything. Lost everything. Okay. Easy enough. All right. <laughs> uh, beautiful. All right, so this time do the same thing, but with no kick. Should be just fine. Okay, and let's warp to complete. Oh, roll out, forgot to hit roll out. Oh, don't roll back. No, there we go. Wrong one. Oh, exit that and launch. All right, so hopefully this one will go a little bit smoother. So I can't think, other than spin stabilization, I don't know if there's going to be any other way to um, get this done successfully. There you go, nice little boost from uh, launch clamps again. All right, just hit one. Parachutes are armed, and they're dangerous. Wonderful. Screw it. Just collect some science and <laughs> keep going. All right, well, at least it won't be completely lost. Let's uh, keep that. Keep that. All right, really got to wait. That's why I always wait. Keep that. All right, so maybe this rocket will actually get somewhere, not over the launch pad, so don't destroy everything, it doesn't look like it's going to go that way. I mean, I could restart it, but to be honest, I think if I just did the same thing again, it wouldn't work. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all the science above this launch pad and over the Earth's shores, and I think it'll be good. There we go. I think just one more material study. I think that's out. Okay, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Alright, and separate that. And I think we're good. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know why one parachute is lower than the other. I mean, it looks cool, but we're supposed to be um, going through the same one. Oh well. I think I'll be just fine. Alright, just wait for this to come down and uh, let's collect. Get all this wonderful science. All right. You know what? This is going down. Oh, actually, relatively quickly. Seven point nine. I'm a little wary of uh, cutting one of the parachutes, but we haven't cut a smaller one. But. I don't know what the crash tolerance is of all the science experiments. That? No. Alright, a couple of these got some data in them. Now, even though it's a pretty beefy computer, um, it is an old computer, so it's not the newest stuff. Because when it came out, it was... Uh, up there, not one of the most powerful computers, but definitely, uh, definitely something. Um, but it's a shame that with OBS running in the background, well, I guess in sync with KSP, it uh, likes to go really slow, it likes to uh, lag quite a bit. Well, I've got 37 sites and I've got 46, which means I can research. Ooh, so let's see, there's payload, and there we go some RCS quads. That's what I really need. 
So what I'm going to do is before I make any changes, uh, I'm going to go ahead and time warp uh, to this tech being done because those are little RCS thrusters are going to make a huge difference. Um, even if it's any uh, lunar missions too, just so that way I can start and stop some engines because what I do is I'll set up a multiple engine configuration on one tank and just, you know, I'll ignite two engines, complete the burn, do another one, complete another burn, and that's how I can get multiple ignitions, especially if I need a powerful thrust to weight ratio or if I'm just going to use these earlier stage engines before I can get the Astros engine. All right. All right, so I think that'll stay the same, but what I will do, I'm going to just simply, um, I'm actually going to remove that as a tank. Whoop, not one. Let's go back to point one. There we go. Just because I like to use this gold foil look for all of my RCS. And what I will do is, let's see, I think I will put the thrusters uh, center mass. Well, I don't know if center mass is the best thing to do, but let's see what we got. Oh, that'll be perfect. So I will put them all here. There we go. Let's go enable the RCS engine. I'm going to switch to, I don't think I can fill these with hydrazine. No, I can't. So. I will go with nitrous oxide because it's light. And there you go. All right, so these should work. All right, so it's enabled. I always have issues with this. So I've, I've got nitrogen, tank is activated. So that should work with no problems. Um, and of course, yeah, I didn't get the payload yet. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, so actually, let me make this adjustment here. Um, there you go. Let's see, will this allow me to... No, it won't. So I wonder... Just retry. There we go. We're sort of clipping through, but at least the rocket will look a little bit more realistic. There we go. All right, nothing clipping through. I think it'll be fine. I'll separate there. Do the, um, ah, oh, okay. I was gonna do the clamshell, but it looks like it's not an option. All right, there we go, one rocket. And this is the beta two configuration. Let's save that and let's build a couple of these because this should be way more successful than its predecessor. Okay, hope to complete. I think that's seven days later. Yep, all the way in March. Let's roll these guys out. All right, there we go. Only eight hours. There we go. Warp to the next morning just so that way you can see it. And launch. All right. Hopefully, this goes better. All right. Go full throttle and launch. Surface and execute. All right, so I may need to go back to the uh, vehicle assembly. So I'm going to enable the RCS and see if, uh, let's see, are these working? Where's that tank? Uh, I might need to, looks like I might have to revert the flight because it's not reading the RCS thrusters. But so what I will do is I'll actually just go straight up with this. Nope, not zero, not zero, not zero, not zero. Ooh, that's, oh, messed up, messed up, messed up. That was a bad misclick. Mm. That was a little too bad. Um, let's see, I'm trying to get in and see the tank in the fairing, but it looks like it's not going to work. Hmm. Alright, 
So I'm just going to go ahead and time warp this till we get to the upper atmosphere. Alright, so there we go. We should be getting up. Actually, I'm just going to let this burn out, and I'm not going to ignite the second stage because I don't think I should have actually um, made the second stage. So what I'll do is I'll just collect the science and I'll keep it. So let's separate that. Let's, uh, there we go. Get rid of those. Oh, it is working. What? Oh. Well, damn. Oh, all right, well, I guess I'll just let it do its thing. So we'll have enough nitrogen. Yeah, I'll have plenty of nitrogen left. No, oh, that's weird. This won't go away. Maybe it'll act as a heat shield, or it'll blow up my rocket. I don't know. Let's find out. All right. I guess I may as well just time warp through all of this and uh, see what I can get from uh, low, uh, near space, or uh, space near Earth. There we go. Should collect a lot. to talk about so I think this is actually working uh, rather well other than uh, just go ahead and grind out collect all this science um, I don't really have any uh, movie editing software so that way I could you know just time you know or magically fast forward through all of this stuff because uh, I have honestly I have no idea how to do any of that stuff anyway because <laughs> I am uh, I know Adobe Bridge is one, but uh, as far as any free software out there, I don't know. But uh, just welcome and uh, welcome to the experience of playing Realism Overhaul with these incredibly long falls and long burn times. And it's um, actually I think it makes the game really nice because it makes it a bit more realistic. It's kind of peaceful, especially when you've got nothing else to do on a Saturday, Sunday, or whatever day of the week you're not working. All right, well, those are still keeping it steady. If I turn them off, I wonder what's going to happen. What? What? Why did you deploy? Is that a drug shoot? Well, I armed it, but... Toggle info. What? Oh, I never... Um... Whoops. Hmm. I never changed that one. How did that not happen? Let's see. Yep, Elvin's still good. All right, well. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, time warp that, and I'll fix that later. Uh, and I could just be uh, part of beta three with that. Or I might, you know, I might just, uh, I'll just change it manually when I go through, because it's not that big of a deal, really. I mean, it's allowing the uh, rocket to stay oriented in the, I guess, the retrograde position. And there they go. Boom. Done. Beautiful. Should be. And let's get some good science. Oh, nope. Don't die. Phew. Close. All right. Let's see. I'm getting some science for Earth shores as well. Good, good, good. So from around Cape Canaveral, I think I should just have the uh, the shores landed, the shores splashed down, water and grasslands. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, getting the polar ice caps, uh, that's pretty easy. Just head north or south, doesn't matter. Um, 
and let's see uh, the tropics is a little bit difficult to land on I think it's South America and I've got the desert and the highlands on the west coast so I'm not quite sure if I should just go ahead and start making some launches towards those general areas because frankly I don't even know if this uh, let's see this rocket should easily make it to the poles um, so actually yeah, I think I'll be making uh, with that in mind oh beautiful lots of science uh, I should actually be making um, quite a bit more trips uh, or quite a few more launches with the Beta 2. I think this is going to be a rather successful uh, suborbital rocket. So let's see, it's got another 20, 10 seconds. So let's see, I've got, uh, let's see, all these are 45. So I wonder what else would be useful. Well, I really want the launch clamps, um, but these engines, however, I really like. Um, I don't need them because I've got this baby, the LR89 series, I've got the Merlin series which works really well, this uh, Agena uh, vacuum engine XLR81 works really really well, um, I'm not a fan of the RD100, I've never used it, uh, some decent, uh, let's see, okay it's the Mercury and some, okay the Altair, uh, Altair and the Caster 120, so these are some pretty good uh, solid rocket motor so I think I will go ahead and let's see you know I'm gonna go ahead and get the launch clamps I don't need any of these for right now uh, actually I don't think I'm gonna need any of these ever but I will get them eventually uh, let's see nope alright see I'm gonna go ahead and research these uh, launch clamps right, not enough science to research another one otherwise I'll just go ahead and get the engines um, but let's see, uh, I was really happy with that Beta 2 rocket. I'm going to go ahead and queue up four more of those. So I've got five more launches because I want one to head north to the poles, one to head, um, let's see, south towards the tropics, and another one to, one, two, three, four, yes, one go west, one north, one, yeah, one north, south, east, and west, and of course another one for, um, I need to start collecting a lot of these mystery, uh, not mystery, uh, science junior rockets. So let's see what I have the VAB. So I've got a lot. They're all underway. And I've got quite a few to go. All right. So, well, I think this is uh, going pretty well. Ready for conditioning. And uh, so let's see. Well, I guess with these uh, launches, I will actually. Uh, See you guys in the next episode, and uh, hopefully in the next episode I'm just going to be launching these uh, Beta 2 rockets, and hopefully they will all go well. See you next time. Bye.